Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Protect Plus's Open Snap Store Manager, also known as Awesome. Awesome allows you to take the Spectrum Protect Plus backups and store them in the Spectrum Protect's container storage pools. This gives those backups the ability to share the storage as well as the deduplication that is built into the Spectrum Protect container storage pools. In this series of videos, James Damgar will be walking you through installing the OSSM package, configuring and backing up virtual machines from Spectrum Protect Plus into Spectrum Protect using Awesome, and then doing a restore from that common data repository as well as a replication of that backed up data to an additional Spectrum Protect server. Our first video will be on the installation of the awesome package. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to James. Hello, everyone. My name is James Damgar, and today I will be taking you through the steps of installing and configuring OpenSnap Store Manager with IBM Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Protect Plus. So the first step we'll want to do is with the installation manager installer that provides the install packages for the Spectrum Protect server is we'll want to install the OpenSnap store manager or OSSM component. So we'll start the installation tool. We'll choose to install. And on this particular system, we've already installed the server, the license and the operation center UI. So we'll want to select OpenSnap store manager hit next, select the same package group and the default installation path, click install, and it shouldn't take too long to install. And here we see that it's completed. We'll click finish. And now we can exit the installer. So at this point, the OpenSnap store manager GUI is installed. The next thing we'll want to do is run the configuration wizard for OSSM, and that is the OSSM cfg.bin executable. So this will launch a configuration wizard. What this allows you to do is create your initial application key that will be used by Spectrum Protect Plus to communicate with OSSM and the Spectrum Protect server. So you'll be able to select your language, click OK. The wizard will point you to our documentation that describes Awesome as well as its features and how to configure it. What we'll want to do here is create a new OSSM instance, since we're running this for the first time. Hit Configure. We want to select the IBM Spectrum Protect server instance user we want to run this with. So in this case, we'll choose our only user since we only have one instance running. The default port of 3337 is fine. This will be the TCP IP port that the OSSM service listens on on the server system. And here we need to enter the fully qualified domain name of the Spectrum Protect server. So in this case, skywalker.storage.tucson.ibm.com. The reason this is needed is this fully qualified domain name is actually embedded into a TLS security certificate that's used uh, by OSSM. So it needs to match the FQDN of the system it's running on. We'll give it a administrative user and password. So this administrative user needs to have system class access. This user is only used temporarily when setting up OSSM. OSSM will actually create a administrator specific for its needs. So this administrator that you pick here only needs to be used once. Then hit configure. This will take a few moments. It's generating a new registration key. It's fetching TLS certificates and data from the Spectrum Protect server, and it's creating its directory structure that it uses for OSSM. At the very end, you're presented with the OSSM registration key. You can actually fetch this key later if you don't happen to copy it now, but it's easiest just to copy this off to a clipboard or a safe place that you can use later. So I'll do that now, and then I can hit Next. It also notifies you that it started the OSSM service on this system. Click Done, and then the config wizard will exit. And actually at this point, if I do a system CTL status OSSM, I should see that the OSSM service is now active and running and accepting uh, connections on port 3337. 
So this is one way that you can validate that the service was successfully installed on the Spectre Protect server. So the next step is we'll want to connect IBM Spectre Protect Plus to this instance of OSSM. So I have the 10.1.12 Spectre Protect GUI here. I will log in. And in order to add OSSM, one of the first things you may wish to do is you can optionally add a new storage site to house your resources. So I'll do that here. I'll call this my test site. And as you know, the Spectre Protect Plus site is kind of a logical container for resources. So you can kind of think of a site as a kind of logical collection of systems that you're protecting and the data protection applications and services that go along with that. So now that I have a site, I can add OSSM storage. On this particular Spectrum Protect Plus, I already have a couple of OSSM instances configured, but I will add the one that I've just generated now. Plug in the host name for the system, choose the new site I created, test site. You'll notice that I can only create a single OSSM instance per site. So the other sites that already have OSSM are, are not listed here. Choose the port that OSSM is configured with, which was the default 3337. And at this point, I will paste in the application registration key that was provided by the config wizard. One of the last things you need to do is actually provide the certificate that's generated on the Spectrum Protect server system for OSSM, and that's so it can be validated by Spectrum Protect Plus. So if we go back to this GUI over here, if you go into home, TSM inst1, OSSM.secret. So when OSSM is installed on this system, we chose the TSM inst1 user, which is the instance owner user of the Spectrum Protect server. And within the secret directory will actually be a certificate.pim, which is the certificate that was generated for this OSSM instance. There's many ways you can provide this. One of the easiest ways is to copy and paste. So you can copy and paste the content in between the begin certificate and end certificate. Alternatively, you can download this file and upload it into the GUI. In my case, I have already provided the certificate, so I will choose a existing certificate, which is for my Skywalker system. But you could copy and paste it from the command line, or you could upload the file as well. Hit next. So the first thing Spectre Protect Plus does is it communicates with OSSM and finds a list of directory container storage pools on the system. So at this menu, you're able to pick which storage pool you want to store your OSSM data into. So I'll select this pool next. This gives you a review of all the items that you've selected. You can hit Submit. And the storage has been successfully added. You'll notice that it comes up with zero bytes available at the beginning. There is a background process that will refresh this shortly, and then you'll be able to see what's the capacity of the storage pool underpinning the server and how much has been used so far. So that will update later. So now I have OSSM storage. The second component that you need with OSSM is your OSSM proxy. So what we'll want to do is navigate over to the VADP proxy panel and hit register proxy. So with OpenSnap Store Manager, we actually do double duty with the VADP proxy that's used for virtual machine backup and restore. We install the OSSM components for the proxy OSSM on the same system that the, the VADP proxy is deployed to. So in this case, we'll enter in my desired proxy. So this is a system that already exists and that I'm wishing to deploy my resources to. And I would advise that you look at the latest operating system support matrix for OSSM to determine what kind of system and operating system you need. By hitting the Get Server Key button, it goes off and fetches the SSH key for that system. So you can actually manually verify this fingerprint if you wish to, to verify that this system is actually the one that you intend to talk to. We'll want to select the site that we've assigned the new OSSM storage to, which is test site. And then we'll want to enter in a operating system user on that system. Now this 
user needs to be a user that has sudoer permissions on this uh, proxy system. So in our documentation, we describe how to set this user up as well as what rights and benefits it needs. So we'll hit next, shows you a review of what you've chosen, hit submit. And this will take a few minutes as it goes off and it installs the VADP proxy software as well as OpenSnap Store Manager proxy software installs the services related to Awesome and starts them up. So I'll let that run in the background for a few moments. And just one thing that you can look at on the back end is when the VADP proxy software is installed, it will install it into the opt IBM SPP path. So you'll find all of the various library files, scripts, applications that it uses here. Meanwhile, the OSSM component will be installed into the OSSM path. And we see some of that content uh, being laid down here. OK, and then after the VADP proxy and OSSM proxy software is deployed, you'll see this type of panel. So you'll see that here's my new proxy with OSSM enabled. And I can click on it, discover how many CPU cores it has, how much available memory it has. And it can adjust the various proxy options. These are applicable for the VADP proxy. So in my case, I'm going to want to select a certain transport path. And at this point, there's a couple of ways that you can validate the health of your proxy. One way is from the command line on the proxy system. So if you go into opt IBM SPP, you can see the VADP proxy software installed to this path. If you go into the OSSM directory, you can see the OSSM proxy applications and configuration uh, deployed to this path. If you do a system CTL status on OSSM, this will show you, as with the primary IBM Spectrum Protect server system, the OSSM service is enabled and running here. It's also listening on port 3337, which is opened in the firewall as a part of the deployment. I can also look at the status of the OSSM DB service. This is the proxy database service that is currently built on MariaDB. So we can see that this is active and running as well. From the Spectre Protect Operations Center, you can actually add proxy systems for monitoring. So I can hit monitor. You actually enter in the configuration details for your primary OSSM system. So I will enter in the username and password that the OSSM service is running under on the Skywalker system. Hit next and accept. And this will add both the primary system as well as the proxy system for monitoring. It actually takes a, a little bit for it to collect its first set of data. OK, and I thank you very much for watching this video and going on this OSSM journey with me. And I invite you to check out the other awesome Spectre Protect and Spectre Protect Plus related videos that we have out there on YouTube. Have a good day.